Okay, so now that we have finished the determine budget process here in the sixth edition of the PMBOK, per the crowd training, we're going to review the inputs, outputs, tools, and techniques. Starting obviously with the inputs, we have the plans. So what were the plans for us to take care of? And that is our project management plan. I'm going to draw the file cabinet because it consists of many different plans that we're going to be referencing, obviously the cost, but many other project plans could be referenced as we are trying to determine the budget. But in the previous process, we also talked about with the estimated cost, we are going to take those estimates and we're going to use those estimates to help us, I'm going to draw a bunch of dollar signs there, <laughs> but pretty much that and all the other project documents that are relevant to us in determining our budgets, we are going to be using that as an input. Also too, the environment that we work in is essentially just a I'm going to draw a bunch of buildings because it represents the people, the environment, the organization that we work in, the style, the approach. And so that's just briefly referred to as your enterprise environmental factors. Also, there could be budgetary tools and templates and process assets. And those are your organizational process assets as a sort of a collective example, but they could be used to help us determine the budget. Maybe there's certain forms we have that will assist us to make things easier. Those are the inputs. Then the various tools and techniques to help us determine the budget. Well, one could just be we have experts on the staff. Uh, certain stakeholders on the team are very good at this. They know what to do, how to do it, how to um, direct us. Maybe that we are using uh, our own techniques and our own experience. But whatever the case, there there is going to be some times where you just have to rely on your expertise, your experience, your judgment, and uh, that probably is not going to be the only technique you use, but it is definitely going to be one of those techniques that is going to assist us to determine the budget. Also, uh, if we take all those cost estimates that we had here and we funnel them together. I'm going to try to draw a funnel here. And we take those estimates and put them all together into uh, whatever package we want to refer to it as. But really, this is our, we're trying to get to as a budget. So it's an aggregation. And so in that case, it's just cost aggregation. Uh, you can have a few other techniques. One, you can look at the history of things and do a review to see, well, how did we spend things before? How cautious should we be? How, you know, maybe um, aggressive we should be? But as we look at the historical information that we have gathered or maybe don't have gathered, but we need to go research, but we are going to do a review of things to help us get a better sense of how we should set out our budget and determine it for this project. Also, when we have the funding come in, our funding may come at certain points in the project. And if we notice that there is times where we're going to be spending more or less than what we actually have, we might need to do some adjustments to fit or reconcile it to how our funding actually is being appropriated. Our funding limit reconciliation and then there also may be times where we might not have all the money up front but we know over the time what we need and what we expect and we might have to go out and get the the money to be able to support the various different timing and needs of our project and so we might have to actually use some financing maybe to increase now that we've gone through the aggregation of our costs, realizing, you know what, we just didn't have enough or we need to find more resources to be able to fulfill our needs in terms of cost. All right, those are the various tools and techniques. Now let's look at the input. Those outputs are going to be, well, the budget in a way, but the budget is sort of written in any particular way here in the PMP and the PMBOK is that we have this budget and these aggregated costs and everything that has been determined, but we're going to lay it out in a certain manner that is going to be it over time. 
to show how the costs are expected to be spent and typically follows sort of this S curve kind of look. But really what this is is our cost baseline that we are going to use to help us monitor and to compare our progress throughout the project to see if we are on task or if there's variances and to help us determine and to get a good gauge as to how our project is performing in terms of cost. Also based on this we can take these plans, the baseline, and figure out when and how we should expect or need to have the various different funds allocated to the project and so we might look at well what are those requirements and those requirements are for funding of the project and that all together is your project funding requirements as an output and how these should fall in line and if we have learned anything we should be able to look at our various project documents and update them. They could be things like our lessons that we've learned, um, information about our estimates, uh, the tools that we used, could be even some identified risks that we've identified or, or have found more information about that we want to help document. But overall, that is the inputs and outputs of tools and techniques for the determined budget per the sixth edition of the PMBOK as part of here the Crowd Trainings interactive course. And you can find out more throughout the course that we just went through.